Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this special rendition of Revolution Awakening. I am your host, Angie. And I'm Jules. And we are the two that deliver quality conscious content every Tuesday on bostonfreeradio.com as well as all streaming platforms. And for those of you who are not um, familiar with what we do and who we are, our podcast really strives to bring different types of topics. Um, we kind of hit on really... A little bit of everything. Yeah. Really. Um, yeah. Mind, body, soul topics, issues that shape society, mm -hmm. um, anything that we might be passionate about or we feel like people should be passionate about, mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk about. We talk about a lot of things. But today, um, we do something that's dedicated to females um, ever so often. This episode is actually a special one because it is called The Future's Female. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm so excited. As you can see, we have our lovely guest in front of us right now. Yes, and we're so excited. We're so excited. We're so excited. <laughs> um, and so a little bit about Lisa. She is a vocalist in Boston as well as abroad, and mm -hmm. she's also a very dedicated mother. Um, a teacher. A yes, talented <laughs> teacher, and actually a really good friend of ours. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy to have you. So Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, Lisa, I was thinking about how I actually met you for the first time. It was with Jules. I, I remember that. I literally, there's a picture of me and you that popped up on my story the other day on Facebook, and it's at your show, and Angie was like, there's this chick that I really want to check out. She's so cool. She, like, sings rap songs, but, like... What, I don't remember. Where were I, we? So we were at some club in like Boston. I don't mm -hmm. know. It was probably I like seven was years ago. Yeah, because like, that was when me and you first started hanging I'm out. I'm very and, intrigued yeah. because yes. I need to know where I, this I club is. I forget where it was. Um, it was a smaller place. I don't think it's even there in Boston anymore. Yeah, I don't think so and either. And what happened was that I think I saw a video of you on online and you were singing somewhere but you were doing like covers of hip-hop songs mm -hmm. and I was like who is she where did she come from why don't I know about her and I think I was like actually a creep and I like found your personal Facebook page and like friend requested you because I'm a weirdo and I was like I I'm going it. to our next show um and then I was like Julie I you're told like you're her. coming and yeah. I was like okay <laughs> Um, you were so nice. Like, I'm sure you probably get so many people that you meet, like, every single day. Um, but your vibe was just so authentic. And I just saw how people really, like, gravitated towards mm -hmm. you. And, I mean, your singing voice was just so amazing. And it was just, like, a best night for us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I totally want to support her. Like, I'm so into this. Yeah. Was this the camera lounge? Was this crazy? Yes, I think it was. I think so. I yep. feel like we also took pictures in the bathroom, but that could have been a joke. Yes, we did. We did. <laughs> we did, like, actually. Yeah. I was a fangirl, I was a, and I still am. No, but say. you saying that is such a big deal because everyone says I ground myself in authenticity and being genuine, and the reality is, is most people don't, especially in the music business that I'm in. Um, so hearing that from you seven years ago and for you to still attest to that now, also being my friend, is a huge deal. So that was a good throwback. <laughs> yeah, it was so cute. But I mean, when I think about that, like that was seven years ago and mm -hmm. I just feel like you've come so far in your career so and far. just in your personal life. I mean, like, can you kind of walk us like what, when was the tipping point for you to be like, I'm going to take this pro or I'm going to go in the clubs, I'm going to start yeah. singing? When, when did you start that? So, I mean, I come from a musical family. I've been singing since I was really young, but I was way more distracted with sports um, and with working with children with special needs. I think music was always on the back burner. And a few years ago, I was a Boston public school teacher for many years, and I was in the clubs at night, and I was burnt out. I was really burnt out. Um, I had newly become a single mom. I was raising my son by myself, and I was like, now's the time where most people would go, oh, you gotta invest more in your 401k, you need to buckle down on another job, you need to never retire from that job. And I spoke with my dad, who was also a former musician, and he's like, fight or flight, man. Like, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. And I said, I think I'm gonna retire from teaching and move to New York, and he was like, let's do it. <laughs> I and that was that. when I made the decision. So I've been semi-pro for a long time, but it's going on two years of being um, professional. You know, this is my only job is in the music business. That's, that's just so amazing for you to make that life-changing decision. Because mm -hmm. I know, like, for a lot of us, it's so hard. And we just kind of get stuck into that, you know, and every scary. day. Yeah, like survival mode. Comfort and the zones. societal norms that you're supposed to live up to that everybody... Especially Always as a woman. reminds you of, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Right, especially as a mother. As yeah. a mother, yeah. Um, and how long were you teaching for? I taught for 12 years. 
And that and you were a special um, needs teacher? Special education teacher, yeah. yeah, in Boston Public Schools, in the same school, um, the Timothy Middle School in Roxbury. And it was the only school I ever went to. I started there right after college and never wow. left. Yeah, Yeah, because I know that you, people know you really well for being a teacher in Boston and yes. then also being, um, you know, into the music scene. So can you kind of tell us, like, when you decided to go pro, I guess you'd say, and you decided to move to New York, what kind of hardships did you find, <laughs> especially being a single mom? And, like, did you have a support system there? Well... The thing is, you, you nailed it on the head earlier when you said that we stay in our comfort zone. Uh, everyone had told me since I was like 18, dude, you got to go to L.A., Nashville, Atlanta, New York. Boston is not where it's at. And I just always felt like I could make Boston to be where it's at. I could visit L.A., visit New York, and make home the place to make everything happen. But I, I learned that that's not really it. You have to leave to then come back. So yeah, there were a lot of hardships. Uh, immediately moving to New York, in order to get an apartment, you need to show that you have like $10,000 in the bank. It's oh my like, oh my <laughs> it's gosh. literally like, the things you have to do, I was lucky enough to have a friend who had an apartment and was willing to take on a mom and a kid. Um, you know, we shared a room. My son has a great story to tell people that we shared a room in Brooklyn, and it was the first thing he told all his friends at school, so immediately the teachers have to ask you, is everything okay? Right. Yes, I'm right. just broke living in New York. <laughs> um, it, the hardships was that, but the musical family I have is my village. So in New York right now, my son's babysitters are 20 to 30 year old men that play guitar and drums and they've learned to now become nurturers of my son. Um, my son is biracial and I feel like he really needs influences that are men of color. So I make it a thing for him to hang out with them every weekend, barbershop talk, all that. Mm -hmm. And they do that while I'm performing. So it's, it's not easy. I never make it look easy on the internet. As you guys know, I'm constantly <laughs> writing. You know, last week I was on tour sleeping in my car. This week I get a five-star hotel. Mm -hmm. It's not easy and I want people to know but I have no idea what my life would have been like if two years ago I said, let me keep teaching it. I may have had a nervous breakdown, I'm not really sure. I think doing this creative path has actually saved my life, if anything. Um, and again, with the hard days come the good ones, so I wouldn't trade it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, and obviously music has been a big influence in your life. I know that you also have a sibling who is um, a singer as well. And I've He's seen I. <laughs> That's uh, Louis Bella for you um, that don't know that. But yes. um, now, were you like singing with him when you were young? Like, how did that happen? Or were you even singing when you were young? I, it is funny. I did do a couple talent shows when I was younger, and <laughs> my brother had. Uh, a New Year's Eve show, I think I was like 13, Louis a little bit older than me, and his background singers had canceled. It was at the Strand Theater? No, it was at the Orpheum Theater. Is that a theater in Boston? Yes. Come on, yes. 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 Yay. <laughs> so he was opening for, um, I want to say like Mike Bivens, I'm trying to think back to like Belle Biv DeVoe, someone like that. And there I was on stage having no musical direction. I could sing, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And I thought that would be the pivotal moment where I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then I went home and woke up the next day for a hockey game and was like, I don't really want to do that anymore. <laughs> um, so I think hockey and sports was where I was able to shine more. And my fear of the stage was so great. I was really afraid to sing on stage. Really? Yeah, I was just going to ask you that. Super actually. afraid. I would sing. If you ask my friends who laugh at me, I would turn around on stages, big crowds, <laughs> and I would just sing with my back to them. Um, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? You know, I, I went to Boston Public School, I went to Latin Academy and had to leave, um, couldn't hack it. I went to a private school and the choir teacher at the private school, shout out to her, she told me I sang like a goat and that I would never make it as a singer. So I should probably stick to the sport field. And I love that of her because it made me determined to be like, I think I was like 16 at that point. I'm like, actually, I'm going to try this. Yeah. I'm going to be really good at it. And I'm going to have a behind the music where I come back to the school and I'm like, ha ha. <laughs> so she pushed me. And I think people say that a lot, but it's real. When someone kind of goes against you, it, it pushes you. So I'd say 16, 17 was when I said, let me actually start hitting the stages. And Louis paved the way by talking to club owners and saying, hey, my sister's all right, you know, can she do a gig next week? So I do thank him a lot. He really allowed me to get into the spots I wouldn't have if I had no references like him. Yeah. Um, I mean, with you saying that, like, did you, were you, so it seems like you were scared to do it, but you did it anyways, obviously. Yes. Um, but now when you're upstage, you seem like so, like, this is your home, your home. home, you know? And I mean, 
coming that far, how, what would you give other people that are maybe, you know, thinking like they're not good or they're getting that negative feedback? Like, what could you say to somebody maybe like to your 16 year old self? What would you say now? <sighs> To my 16-year-old self, I'd say brush your hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing that I think molded me the most was like 9 million percent of people. That's not a real percentage, but like most people, we have stories of being bullied and people saying you couldn't do things and stuff like that. Um, I fought for so long that I think when I hit my late 20s was when I finally stopped caring uh, what other people thought. And if someone said, how did you do that? I think I got on stages that scared me. I went to LA and got into random open mic nights where I knew no one and I didn't have people filming me at the time or if I did, they weren't tagging me to a point where whatever I did on that stage, I walked away, it was like Vegas. What happens out here stays here. And as I did that more and more, I think what would have happened and what could happen for most people, you either decide this is what I should be doing or it's a wake up call. I've had plenty of friends who ducked out of the music business a few years ago after doing things like that, putting themselves out there and realizing maybe this isn't my path, you know, and finding other means. But for me, it was like, nah, man, if I can do this in front of people I don't know, get laughed at by some, and then one person in the crowd like you says, wow, you're genuine, I'm gonna look you up and follow you, then that's what showed me my true face. And now, yeah, girl, I'm, they have to pull me off the stage. Like, I wanna perform for like 10 hours. I love it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you've come so far from, you know, being 16 to now and not being afraid. Do you ever have moments where you, you do get a little bit jittery before a show or like are there certain shows that mean, might mean more to you or you're singing certain songs or whatever that might bring you back to a place of feeling like you were 16 again? Yes, I'm glad you said that. So I've performed at um, Fenway Park. I've performed at City Field in New York. I performed at Gillette Stadium and I'm not saying this to gas myself up but there's like 60,000 people, right? Yeah, and no I joke. Never, I'd like pass out. <laughs> I don't get afraid, right? Yeah. But then I'll have shows like I did a few weeks ago at a little underground spot in New York and there were like 30 people, not because it wasn't a big crowd, that's all it held. Mm. So there's 30 people in the crowd and I like could feel food coming up in my throat. Like I was so nervous because now with 30,000 people, you're not connecting to anyone. Right, like right. I'm looking at a camera and then I'm keeping it moving and I'm right. like my adrenaline's so high. With 30 people, I'm like, I can see if you pick up your phone to call your man because I'm boring. I can see if you yawned. Like yeah. I literally have to work myself harder to make sure that you're engaged. So yeah, those shows, I am the entire time under the table or down by my side, either holding, I have, um, what are they, like little fidgets mm -hmm. that I squeeze, mm -hmm. yeah. um, either holding that yeah. or tapping my leg. And my real friends will, will notice it. Like my, from here up, I'm like a stallion, but down here I'm like, duh, duh, you know, yeah. tapping my fingers. Yeah. So yes, I do still get nervous. Mm -hmm. The more intimate the setting, the more nerves I get. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would make sense. Cause like you said, you have to connect with those people and they're yes. there for like, that's their specific reason for being there. It's just me. Yeah, yeah. Is you. Not but that also must one. be a really cool feeling that it they're is. really there for you. Right. I can't lie, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of tell us about, um, you know, some exciting things that have been happening recently. I know that you were just recently on the um, Billboard charts, yeah. which is like, what? <laughs> I'm <I'm> so excited. <laughs> right? What? And so like, what brought you there? Like, so the cool thing is my manager and I, my manager's name is Ken, and he is also a dear friend of mine. We, when we were going over my album um, and when to drop it, R&B is obviously a big thing, but if you look at the way R&B has had its way in and out of the mainstream, um, we've got Ella May now, her, you have Lizzo as rap, but she's also mixed with R&B. Mm -hmm. They're huge now, but I dropped Tommy Boy in May of 2018, and... R&B wasn't as popping, so it's a strategy. Mm -hmm. I dropped it in May, and the week that I dropped it, there weren't as many R&B songs charted, so I basically put my album out there and was like, yo, everybody who loves me, chart my album, like, like stream it, you know what I mean? Buy it, tell your friends. And because of that, I got to be in the top 10 of the R&B billboard charts. Um, and to some people, like, you know, especially people in the music industry, it can be give or take some, we're like, okay, what does that mean? Did that put money in your pocket? Mm -hmm. No, but it did something that you didn't do. And right. it's something that I can show my son that your mom, you know, we could have been living in our car three months ago and now mommy's on the billboard charts. Right. And it's a great thing, you know, like I have my master's degree and it's nice to put at the bottom of an email, but it's also nice to put charted on the billboard charts, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? So. I there was a strategy to it, but the people really brought me there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know I was streaming that. I, I was too. Everything. I downloaded that. I was telling people, I mean, just to see like your name 
on iTunes, you know, <laughs> like that you have an album. Like I'm a, I, that must feel like so very amazing. cool. And I, and to, for you to say like how R and B is not like as poppin' anymore, and I think that's like a sad truth because I know like for me like I grew up in like the 90s and the 2000s and mm -hmm. it's like the 90s was R&B every day every and day I feel like now, that's it and now it's like on the radio you don't even hear that anymore no and no you never hear it no. on the radio and it's ever. like very refreshing to know that like at least you're getting some recognition you know maybe not on the biggest scale that you can but that's like amazing and hopefully you know that can be something where I'm turn on the radio and I hear Lisa Bell like that's <laughs> that would be so cool <laughs> you will um and the thing is is the cool part about being a creative is I write all my own music and the new album that I'm writing and the new single that I just dropped is written with my manager songwriter although I'm putting my own music out and doing all that you may hear me on the radio as the songwriter for something because mm -hmm. there's such a big lane for songwriters and the money sometimes in songwriting is greater than actually being an artist, being the artist yeah. which is interesting a friend of mine Billy Walsh she's from Jamaica Plain he wrote um, the song Circles that just came out for Post Malone he wrote Sunflower he wrote all these songs he's from Boston Wow. wow. and Louis Bell who's from Quincy is the producer on all of Post Malone's albums and it's like <gasps> These are Boston dudes, right? Like, hello. And a lot of people don't know that, and I try to spread that word because they say we are not that city. We are crabs in a barrel. We are this, we are that. We definitely are to the outside. But internally, we have a lot of things going on and a lot of people that have done things for our city. And so, yeah, songwriting for me is the next step, and I've been doing it on the low, but you'll see it soon on a greater scale because I've been picked up by some people. So, like, I didn't even know you wrote like that. I thought that, like, I thought... You, you weren't just like writing on your own like all the time. So that's really interesting yeah. to know. Have you always been a writer of music? I've always been a writer. I used to write for like kids in the neighborhood and people to do talent shows. And then my brother and I um, went to Nashville about 10 years ago to see uh, about joining ASCAP or BMI. And it could take hours for me to explain this, but point being, if you're a songwriter, you join ASCAP or BMI. They're two big groups that you join that kind of protect you, show you where your money is, pay you all that. So I joined ASCAP back then, and I just started writing for groups of pop groups. And I don't really sing mm -hmm. pop, but yeah. I can write really good bubblegum pop songs. So I started getting nickels and dimes for those songs, and I'm still doing it. I've also written for rappers. I've ghostwrited for some rappers. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yeah, so I've been writing for a long time. It's just not something I come out saying because singing is the first thing you know me from. Right. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, I know that you have a new project coming out. Yeah. Um, and when can we expect that? So November 29th. <gasps> oh, that's soon, people. Yes, I'm very into the, uh, the stars. So it's Sagittarius season. I am not a Sagittarius, but... That season is fire season. Mm -hmm. I'm an Aries. It's very compatible with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I like it. I'm dropping it on a Friday. I am. <laughs> yeah. It just makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. And um, so the songs are pretty much done. You know, I, I just dropped one of the songs that will be on it. And I just need to get visuals together. And from there, I'll do a tour. And this time, I'm going to start in London. The last time I ended in London. So the kickoff in December will be. Oh my gosh, so you're going back on tour. Yeah. And I know that, was it last year you were on tour? <laughs> it was la It was the fall of last year, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us like a little bit about tour life and I how know. that is as being a mother? I know that that's probably hard to juggle, like everything. But I know like if you aren't familiar with her son, he's the cutest thing and he's a wild man. He's very wild, <laughs> very cute. And um, so how do you kind of like juggle mom life and career life? So tour life was interesting. It was like... Um, Friday through Sunday tour life. So I basically booked my cities to be every weekend for two months. And then the tour ending in London, I booked for Thanksgiving. And honestly, my mom and dad and my New York village were my saviors. So I got moms. I mean, shout out to all the moms in New York who had my son on school nights because I know that was not easy. <laughs> and he came with me to a couple of the tour dates. Um, London was my only time by myself. It was five days. It was the first time I've been away from my son for that long. Yeah. It was really hard. Uh, the technology of FaceTime is bomb, so mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But he's, again, he's five. He's almost six. Shout out to Cassius. Mm -hmm. He understands that music makes money and music makes mommy happy. And it's like a cool thing where when I was teaching and he was three, although he was very young and couldn't communicate as well, I was stressed. 
And I think him, me coming home from that after him being at school, and I just, my tension was so strong. Now it's like mommy's a hippie. Like, hey, mommy (laughs) wasn't working all day. How was your life? You know, it's this cool environment of freedom and expression. And I'm still working at night. You know, I put him to bed and then I have a sitter come. So I'm literally here with him all the time. The only time I leave is when he's asleep. Yeah, so that's, he doesn't know any difference. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the goal. And then he'll come to most of the shows. He's been backstage. He came to Fenway, held my hand before I went on. Like, He's super into it. But going back to touring, like independent life, a lot of it is booking your own through an agent and just hustling your butt off for three months to sell those tickets yeah. and hope that you're over and not under at the end of it. And I was. You know, I didn't lose any money on the tour. I made a good amount of money to be able to sit back and start writing the next album. Mm -hmm. That's so exciting. I mean, that's the goal, right? That's the goal, yes. Mm -hmm. And so will you be doing also the United States tour? Yeah, so I did East Coast and Down, and um, we wanted to do LA, but I got really sick. Um, Vocal therapy for me is very important. Yeah, like how is that? So if you notice, my rasp is strong. Um, I've had some vocal issues with my with my vocal cords. I've talked like this since I was like 15, but it's not a good thing. Whenever you hear someone talk like this, they're either a smoker, which I I'm like not, it's sexy. or yeah, it's very <laughs> sexy. But it's 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 like da- I'm like damaging my voice when I speak. Um, I know that's not sexy anymore, right? <laughs> but I do vocal therapy, and so after the tour, there was a ton of that um, vocal silence. I literally will wear a whiteboard around my neck, and I will not talk for days at a time. And my son knows that. Like, he hates when the board's out. He's like, Mom, I can't do. Um, But it is, it's like having an instrument and getting your guitar tuned. Like, you need to rest your voice because now it's literally my moneymaker. Whereas before, teaching was my, now it's like, this is all you got, sis. So making sure you take care of it is a big deal. Um, Now, what do you do to kind of like, when you lose inspiration or if you're going through a hard time, like, what do you do personally to kind of like bring yourself back up and make you feel like your best self? Like my self-care? Yeah. So living in New York is like you walk out your front door and everything is inspiring. I think the subway is my biggest system of inspiration. Even the Boston subway does that, but New York... You sit on a New York train for two hours. This is what I do when my son was in school in New York. And I just kind of look at the people. And the thing is, a lot of tourists will come to New York and they'll make fun of people that are on the train. They'll make fun of homeless people or people dressed differently. For me, it's a total opposite. It's like anyone that's there has a struggle or the outfit they're wearing that day might be wild too, but I'm like, damn, that's inspiring. I could write a song about that. So I'd say the train is like my biggest form of inspiration, um, things that reboot me because it's not easy. I'm not getting gigs and making money every day. You know, some weeks you can make four grand and some weeks you can literally owe someone four grand. So I do get down a lot. Um, Depression living in New York in the winter is very real. People don't speak about it often, but you know seasonal depression, but seasonal depression in New York is like next level because the train shut down and no one has a car and it's like you're stuck in your oh, house. God, and it's, so you really can't do anything. You can't, and you can't meet up with a musician. So it's like looking to, Instagram is not a form of inspiration for me. Instagram is toxic for me and it's used for me to put my stuff out there, but it can wrap you in a world of, oh, I don't look like that girl or I'm not gigging in, in you know London right now. That's really sad. Right. So going out in the world or making your own inspiration is the only way that, that I like to have my form of self-care, I'd say. Yeah. I like that. I do too. I wanted to ask about your son. Do you think that he would, does he have any interest in wanting to be a musician or like what are his, you know, do do you see anything like that in him? Cassius is funny. So Cassius is more like, he wants to play the drums. Yeah. He's really interested in banging on things all the time. (laughs) But he doesn't like the idea of me being on stage and taking my attention away from him. Mm. So he thinks that if he gets on stage that he won't have any friends or any time for anything, which is really (laughs) sad because I'm like, I have friends, buddy. Um, So he more wants to do... um, He wants to do something with computers. He wants to do something with video games. Um, That's more his deal. I think music is exciting for him. He likes to dance to it, but he more wants to do things with anything with technology. So that's his his lane. But there's parts of me that thinks he's going to bust out and want to start doing music because he does make up his own songs all the time. Yeah, Yeah, I see him like (laughs) singing little things and like doing his little All the time. (laughs) He's so funny. I know. Maybe because he's so young, he associates it with having no friends. And then when (laughs) he gets older, he'll be like, wait, this is actually really cool. I hope so. I'm like, mom is cool. Like we have, yeah, we're good. (laughs) 
<laughs> Who are some of like your musical influences that you grew up and love and? So we are on radio, but we're also on TV. So I can show that Stevie Wonder is tattooed on my hand because Stevie Wonder is the man. Mm -hmm. And my father was in like a 12-piece horn band um, before I was born, before I was a thought in his mind. <laughs> and <clears throat> that music mixed with Motown was always in the house. So Stevie is like, he's the man. And I got to meet him years ago. I got to sing a song while he was in the bar that I was in. Like, life goals were made um, because of him. So Stevie is like my old school. Now the young cats who don't know who Stevie is, and you are crazy if you have no idea who he is. Um, why don't you know Stevie? Um, like I'm how super... people didn't know who Ozzy Osbourne was I when can't... he was on Post Malone's song. How funny is <laughs> have that? Have you seen that? I'm no! sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt, but I just wanted that. to bring please that up. Please talk about that. that. I saw it on Facebook or something because Ozzy Osbourne is featured on one of um, Post Malone's know. songs, and like oh, kids like my sister's age and younger are like, Post Malone put this guy on the map. Like they have no idea who oh, no, he no, is no. whatsoever. So it just when you it's said so that, it sad. reminded me. Of that. <laughs> it's like it, what? That is what it is, and I try to bring that back even at shows. I try to remix his songs in certain ways just to make people understand he's a man. Um, in newer times, James Blake is a huge inspiration, and James Blake, I always say he's obscure. He's not. And someone, all my friends would hurt me for saying that. But he's obscure to people that only listen to the radio. Right. Um, he takes a, a pedal board, a soundboard. He's making his own music while playing piano and, and looping all these sounds. It's called a loop station. He's a musical genius. And his album sounds like it does on stage. And my goal is to always have my music, me be as good on stage as I am on the, on the um, CD yeah. or on the MP3 because that's not the same for everyone. Right. And James Blake yeah. is an inspiration for that. And, and I mean, and then you bring me to super modern times, Ari Lennox is an R&B goddess. And if you don't know who Ari Lennox is, her new album, Shea Butter, is so incredible. She's so unapologetic like Lizzo. Mm. And her sound is just reminding me of the Mary J's and of the 90s that you say we grew up on but we don't that. hear. Yeah. So r and is making its way back, not to mainstream radio, but it's still making it back to the kids, quote unquote. You know, the kids, the 18 to 25, are starting to reappreciate mm. R&B, I think. Yeah. So it's, it's important, <laughs> I hope. I know, that's... I know. That would I mean, be the, the great part. we do have like so many different platforms, and it's not like because when we were growing up, it was like the radio. You could only listen to the radio. Like, I don't even listen to the radio story. ever now. <laughs> like if my phone is dead, I feel like I'll sit, I'll drive in silence. Like I can't listen to. The, I don't really like mainstream, so I would rather listen to artists that maybe not everybody else knows about. Right. But like I like to listen to music that makes me feel something. Like when I listen Agreed. to it, like even if it's even if it's not even really an emotion, it's just like the sound makes you feel like ooh, like something. I don't know, you know yeah, something. Like I would huge. rather listen to music like that. I mean, that. sound in itself. Like vibrations don't lie. I mean, for that, true. Just saying that, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. I just feel like it's nothing's really like as authentic anymore in the music yeah. industry. And I mean, it probably hasn't been like that in a long time. But I'm really happy that we do have like Spotify. We have okay. SoundCloud. Serious so podcast internet. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I know you have a SoundCloud, and your new I single do. is on the SoundCloud. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Rocky Loves Emily. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the vibe. I love the whole. Oh, I haven't production. heard it yet. I can't wait to hear it. How dare you? It, I know. I didn't even know. I'm it's sorry. almost like a like a nineties, like eighties vibe. Yes. Kind of Driving in your Corvette or your El yes. Camino. Yes. I love it. It's it's mm. everything. But so like the that. the song title comes from the movie Three Ninjas. And that's so funny. I was just talking about that movie with somebody. Have the you other seen day. it? Like one so a long it's, time ago. It, I think it came on '89, but like mid '90s was when like a lot of people were discovering it. But there's, you know, the little brothers are making fun of the brother, Rocky, who's in love with Emily. And they're going, Rocky loves Emily. And I have snippets of that in my song. I'm not going to go into why the song is called that. It's too many layers. But because you said the sound is like that, that's the connection to the song. Like it is. It's, it's a late 80s, early 90s. It's kind of pop, which is different for me. Um, but the feel and the reception from everyone is so cool. I have it on SoundCloud now because I haven't got the... Um, clearance for the sample that's in it, just mm -hmm. to be super transparent, yeah. but that will be cleared, it will be on iTunes and Spotify for my new album. I'm so excited, I yeah. and I know that you are on um, iTunes with the um, previous release yes. that you came out Tommy with, Tommy Boy, Boy. Um, and so, it's on Spotify too. Yeah, and I know that we're going to actually have you sing some songs off of these things today. Wait, I'm not prepared, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. And that's why this episode is really special to us, too, because, um, well, one, usually we're never even in front of a camera, so never. this is, like, totally different for us. <laughs> Out of our comfort zone. Hey. Yeah, and usually we don't necessarily have somebody perform. Um, so this is going to be really exciting, because you are about to take over for the next 15 minutes or so. Yes. And she's going to show you what she got, and we're just so excited. So... 
bear with us as we switch it up. Once again, my name is Lisa Bello. Thank you so much to Revolution Awakening for having me. At this point, I'm gonna do a live performance, but first I wanna talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do at this performance. So on Friday, I released a song called Rocky Loves Emily, which we talked about. My dear friend Ken Via actually wrote the song, and my friend Brandon Luciano, AKA myself, the producer, he produced the song. The cool thing about this one is we were not in the same state when Ken and I put this song together. This is the first song I've ever done that I completely gave reins to someone else to write it and do the melody without me having any say. So if anyone ever writes a song for me or with me, they always um, give me the writing and I do the melody, always. It's just a thing I have, like a control thing. And for this song, Rocky Loves Emily, I didn't allow that. Um, I said he could have full reins and the song ended up being what I think is my favorite song to listen to. It's not the favorite song of mine that I've ever done. Um, another song that we're going to do that's called Make It, which is off my Tommy Boy album, would be my favorite. This song is going to be in the Italian Film Festival next summer. And this song basically was how I was feeling when I was with my son in New York and kind of feeling like, was this the right move? Should I have done this? Um, so I wrote the song called How, are we, how Am I Going to Make It? And it's literally the highest one that's streamed out of all my songs. And then the other song I'm gonna do is called Don't Come Down, which we're gonna censor. And this song is kind of like some of my newer songs that if, what I want out of life from someone, from a partner, from a friend, is someone that gives me the type of love and reciprocity that will never come down. Um, regardless of what type of things that we go through, I, I just wanna make sure that the person that I am engaging with, again, whether it's a relationship or a friend, that we experience something that is reciprocated. And yeah, I was gonna do an Alanis Morissette cover too, but I don't think I have time for that. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's appropriate either, um, but. So, Sean Cronin is playing guitar with me today. Sean has been playing music with me for years and is one of my dear friends and now brothers. And hopefully I get him on one of the songs in this album. Today is the day to ask him. Right, Sean? <laughs> on the spot, okay. I mean, so. You got a whole record, yes. Well, you're on the spot, so everyone sees you and they can attest to it that you said you do it. Um, <laughs> also, just to plug real quick, on Sunday, I'm gonna be at the Boston Cannabis Fest, which is gonna be at the Ink Block in Boston, um, opening for Lupe Fiasco, which is very, very cool. And it's a daytime show, so you have to be 21. 21 yet? 21, any of your viewers out there? And uh, that, that show is gonna be really cool. It is run by a woman, Lisa Finelli from Experience Creative. And no disrespect men, but I'm very, very happy to do shows like today and shows like the one on Sunday that are fully backed by women. Hello, you know, we out here trying to get equal pay and, and make it happen. Um, so the first song I'm gonna do, let's do Make It, Sean, when you're done. Um, and if you're out there and you have an iTunes account, SoundCloud account, I'm on everything, you know, Lisa Bello. Bellow like jello. It's okay. Sean's just dropping stuff. Don't worry about it. It's, for those of you listening, he's just, just dropping vases and stuff. <laughs> you could drop a beat. I mean, dropping a beat is a good thing, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, Sunday, if you're in Boston, definitely check out the Ink Block. Tickets are on sale. Boston Cannabis uh, Week. And it's on Instagram. Or it's on my Instagram, Lisa Bello Music. It's gonna be fun to do one of the songs that I've actually never done, so that would be good. <laughs> yes. Yes. down a key is that okay a little bit like a four step I made up words I don't even know what that means <laughs> how are we gonna make it if we 
we don't even know what we're here for Yeah Said how we gonna make it If every other day leaves my heart sore Running round, running round, running round slowly. Yes, I'll be taking my mind, taking my mind apart. Trying to figure out why the I feel so lonely. While well, you're standing there across from me, but you're a thousand miles away. Said, how are we gonna make it? If we don't even know what we're here for yeah, yeah. Said how are we gonna make it If every other day leaves my heart sore Said I'll be thinking about, thinking about, thinking about everything if we don't want to take a stand, how can we make it right? It seems like every other word is thoughts and prayers, and I'm so raised. Then you don't do it, and they all quit, and it's a constant rotary. Said, how are we going to make it if we don't even know what we're here? Said, how are we gonna make it if every other day leaves my heart sore? Said, how are we gonna make it if we don't even know what we're here for? Na 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 na. Said, how are we gonna make it if every other day leaves my heart? And that song was called Make It off the Tommy Boy album. Hey. Thank you to Sean Cronin. Let me drink some of this. Let me drink some of this nice tourmaline spring water. <laughs> Product placement is key if you're listening and you can't see me shoving the water bottle into the camera. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you got your own too. How are we looking with, we looking okay with time? We looking okay with time for one more or two more? What do you guys think? Do you? Two more is good? All right. We're going to do Don't Come Down. I think that's a good song to do. So again, this song, <laughs> you'll hear it for yourself, you understand, but this is what I want from here on out. Yes. If you ain't gonna give one hundred percent to me, I don't want it, and I don't need it. If you go lie and say you want me when you you don't mean it, I don't want ya, <laughs> and I don't need ya. Because I want the kind of love that goes up and it don't come down, down. I want the kind of love that goes up and it don't come down, down. But I don't think you got it. And that's all right with me, yeah. I never think you had it. You and that fake university you came from, it's bull. Yeah, 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 it's a lie.
Cause you be on that maze, said you be on that maze You're lying every day, you're knowing that you got me stressed Said you be on that maze, said you be on that maze You're lying every day and said and that you got me stressed I want the kind of love, I want the kind of love I want the kind of love that don't come down, no I want the kind of love, I want the kind of love I want the... I said, I said I want the kind of love that don't come down And maybe we can kick it every time you come around And you know that I love you, but I don't really need you No, 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 no I said, I said, I said I want the kind of love that don't come down And maybe we can kick it anytime you come around But you know that I love you, but I don't really need you No, 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 no because I want the kind of love that goes up and it don't come down, down. I want the kind of love that goes up and it don't come down, down. I said I want the kind of love that goes up and it don't come down, down. I don't think you got it. And that's all right with me, yeah. I never think you had it And that's what it's gonna be So that was Don't Come Down off the Tommy Boy album. Thank you, Mr. Sean Cronin. <laughs> is one more okay, everybody? All right, so this last song is called Rocky Loves Emily. I've never done it live. You neither. <laughs> and since I don't know it that well, we could just make up the whole thing and everyone be like, yeah, good job. So, <laughs> Rocky Loves Emily, produced by... Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying a tempo, I think I'm just <laughs> snapping. <laughs> but that would be the tempo that I like, yeah. <laughs> All I can think about as I've been there Trying to make sense of it to bring me there All of this power you have over me There's something on the wind The howling wind Caffeine And psychedelics Long nights, we got lost together. We got lost together. Day. Oh, we got lost together. Something about this feels so familiar. Something about this feels so familiar. Said all I can think about as I've been there Trying to make sense of it to bring us there yeah. All of this power you have over me There's something on the wind Howling wind, yeah Chasing honesty in these covers what if we just stop cross lovers what if we're too lost to know what if we lost our control something about this feels so familiar see light shining in the lifetime chase me quicker in Oh, oh no, no, said something about this feels so familiar. See a light shining in the lifetime. Embrace me quicker, shake me quicker. Said all I can think about is I've been there. And trying to make sense of it to bring you there. 
said all of this power you have over me there's something on the wind the howling wind yeah so something about this feels so familiar i'd see a light shining in a lifetime babe so something about this feels so familiar See a light shining in a lifetime, baby, baby. Said I'm so into you, yeah. I promise not to miss anything, yeah. yeah. I promise not, yeah. And I said. All I can think about is I've been there I'm trying to make sense of it to bring us there All of this power you have over me There's something on the wind Howling away day That song was called Rocky Loves Emily Sean Cronin on guitar. I think I'm going to welcome the ladies back pretty soon from Revolution Awakening. Once again, thank you guys so much for having us out. Does anybody have fun? <laughs> uh, yes, so thank you everybody for coming out, hanging out, and um, being a part of this special rendition of Revolution Awakening. Again, this is something we usually don't do. We're usually on your airwaves every Tuesday um, on bostonfreeradio.com. But thank you so much for coming here and serenading us with your beautiful voice. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, so can you tell everybody like where they can find you on social media, um, where they can find like your tour dates and all that good stuff? Thank you. I like this mic stand for those of you listening. It's very cute and little. So you can find me on Instagram at Lisa Bello Music, L-I-S-A-B-E-L-L-O Music. And my website is lisabello.com. You can find all my tour dates on there. You can see all my funny videos, how I pull up to your girl is my slogan. You can read all about that on there. I am, listen, the shirt I'm wearing is merch. If you're listening, I have a tie-dye shirt on. It says, how I'm pulling up to your girl. And you need to just look at my Instagram for that. And I'll also tag Sean and mine. Sean is under Chrome Sausage, and he's at, is it Wonder Bar for Chrome Tuesdays? Every Tuesday night, he does this dope live music night, Brighton or Alston? It's like Alston. It's like Alston, so that means it's probably Alston. And that's called Chrome Tuesdays. That's like one of the best live music nights in Boston. And you'll find me there pretty soon. But yeah, I'm all over the country. My New York dates are coming up, and... Um, I'd love you guys to check me out on Instagram, but even more so, please go back to Revolution Awakening, to these ladies, to the side gigs they have aside from this. It's super important for us as women to not tear each other down, but lift each other up in ways like this, in facets like this. Um, thank you to Somerville for allowing us to have this Vox pop-up shop. This is dope. Yeah, special thanks to um, Somerville Media Center and also Vox Pop Assembly Row for having this beautiful location where we are able to bring you quality conscious content. That is our main goal. And um, to the next time, tune in and renew your mind.